Welcome to Source BMX. I'm Van Homan. Today we're here in Chiba, Japan with Scottish street ripper Alex Donachy, and we're going to take a look at his signature BSD build. All right, Alex, let's start with the frame. You've got the Alvix AF Plus. Break down these acronyms for us. What does all this mean? It sounds like some kind of password requiring special characters. AOVX simply is just my name, but with VX at the end. What, what, what's, wait, VX or VF? VX. VX, VX. what the VX stand for? Uh, back in the day, there was this camera that everybody filmed with. Uh, it's, uses mini DV tapes. All right, yeah, I'm very, I'm very familiar with these cameras. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, this is a, a lot. so this is, so this is kind of a tribute to the throwback of filming video parts and, and whatnot. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I spent good 10, 15 years just filming video parts and making DVDs and it was kind of just because of that, really. Ah, I think that's kind of perfect. So it kind of captures the spirit of a street rider you're out there filming with the guys. The VX is a camera you can just throw in your backpack and um, this frame just captures that spirit. All right, Alex, you mentioned to me that frame size is really important to you. You're running the 20.6 top tube. You got a 75.5 degree head tube on this thing and the chain stays can be 12.5 to 13. So how tall are you exactly? Why do you choose this size top tube? And what else is important to you when designing a frame? First, um, five six. Okay. Part of the five six club. All right. And uh, yeah, I've always ran twenty point six since I made it to the twenty inch bike days. Okay. Uh, it's just I feel like it's a good size, sort of in the mid range, you know. So it's not too big, not too short. And then the back end, obviously, I run really short. When I was when uh, BSD asked me. To have a signature frame, they're like, "What do you want?" And I was just like, "This is it needs the shortest back end okay. you can possibly make." And Graham was like, "Are you sure? That's nobody's <laughs> nobody's probably gonna buy that." I was like, "No, it's fine. That's what I want to run." And uh, he went and designed. At the time, it was the shortest that they could make. And uh, yeah, it's been the exact same sizes ever since. The the shorter back end, like, why do you run that? Just just quicker, more responsive. Yeah, just simply makes everything easier so it's just like it just made sense like <laughs> that's it. everything so literally everything every trick is easier with it with the 12.5 rear end can't speak for every trick but all the ones that i like to do like kind of spins and sort of more quick sort of grind spins that kind of stuff it definitely made it easier all right alex you're running the bsd sam jones signature fork the jones and fork it's got a 22 millimeter offset Again, kind of fits in with that, like those steeper angles, quicker, snappier. Why do you choose this offset and what else should we know about this fork? I don't really know much about fork offsets, to be honest. Uh, I just you knew as soon as Sam got them as forks, I was like, oh, well, that must be better. So I just ran them. If Sam can do the nose wheelie with this fork, then you can do the nose wheelie with this fork. Yeah, that's it. So you just trust, you just trust Sam's recommendation. Yeah. All right. He knew what he was doing. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Alex, you've also got your signature BSD Alvix bars. They're available in three sizes, 9.25, 9.5, and 9.75. You're choosing the smaller option, 9.25. You also, they're already pre-trimmed at 28 wide, correct? Um, you've also got a couple options with the clamping. You've got the one inch clamping and then the traditional seven eighths. So why do you choose this geometry? Why do you choose the, the bigger clamping power? Uh, just, it's a lot more sturdy, bars don't slip, yeah, for the bars, just like the comfiest size for my sort of, for your bit, height, for my frame, yeah, sure. um, it just feels natural when your arms are like just a little bit outside your, okay, waist, yeah, that's like, just, is like the most natural feeling, right. they come 28, so I don't need to cut them down, perfect, perfect size, yeah, so that's good, I mean, that's good then, so they're ready to ride, for your style of riding straight out of the box, no having to trim the bars. You've got the one inch clamping, so these things aren't gonna move. Sounds like a perfect setup. So obviously with the one inch diameter tubing on your handlebars, you're gonna need a stem that accommodates that. You've got the BSD leveled stem with a 27 millimeter rise, a 50 millimeter reach, and um, break down this stem for us and how it holds your whole front end together. Just like the right height, 
I've kind of gone over the years between the front load and the top load over the years, but I definitely prefer the top load. It just feels a bit nicer having the bars up there. It's like just better for hopping. All right, anybody who follows these bike checks already knows that the BSD substance cranks are proven to be durable. Um, you've also got the BSD super light sprocket on here. I notice a lot of guys are running guards on their sprockets these days. You choose a more traditional one. You're also riding the traditional 25-9 gear ratio, um, 165 millimeter cranks. Why do you choose this crank arm size? Why do you choose this sprocket? For the sprocket, it's just the lightest. I'm quite into trying to make my bike as light as possible. Uh, getting older now, the body's getting a bit worn out, so anything that can help I like. <laughs> yeah, no sprocket guard. I kind of have this debate with some people, is, is it really doing anything? Uh -huh. um, sometimes, I guess it depends what you're doing with it. But for me, uh, if I do a switch crook and slip out, it just hits the chain. So a sprocket guard doesn't really help. I don't really do any sprocket guard okay. maneuvers. Not yet. I mean, I might do in the future, but for now, I'm just sticking with it. And then, yeah, the 165s, ever since, I think it was Paley that told me about them, the shorter cranks, I've just never gone back. Just feels like so much nicer, just having your feet a little bit closer, but not too much, but it's just like the right length for me and the, st the style that I ride. Sometimes people go a little bit shorter with the crank, sometimes a little bit longer. It seems like the perfect in-between and you don't feel like there's a need for a sprocket guard. You're just not bashing up your chain that much. I guess you're just that smooth. <laughs> Try to be. Yeah. All right, so I'm really digging the shape of your signature BSD Albic seat. Um, what's important to you when designing the shape of a seat and how important is your seat height? Well, I always ran a slim seat for most of my younger days I always just loved the slam slim seat and then when we started going on more trips and stuff we we're cycling around for hours and I was like oh maybe a comfier seat is going to be a good idea so over the years I've kind of just like upgraded got a little bit bigger each time and the seat post has inched its way up just for more comfort it does help with the bar spins as well like a little bit extra to pinch yeah I was going to say to me it looks like the perfect in between size where it's like not obnoxiously big, but it's still enough to kind of lean your knees on to spin the bars and stuff. You've got the BSD Revolution Hub. They did exactly that. They kind of revolutionized the free coaster hub design. This thing sounds like a cassette, responds like a free coaster. How's this thing feel rolling both forwards and backwards? Well, I remember when the day I first put on a free coaster, just a normal free coaster, and I was just like, how have I not done this before? It was just like so stupid that I hadn't tried one out before. Mm. And I loved it ever since. So when, but yeah, obviously the problem with normal coasters was the gap. Uh, so when BSD came along with this, definitely was just like big game changer for sure. So just like a little bit less slack in this and more, more engages quicker? Yeah, I mean, if you want, you can bitch crank through all your bar spins like the cassette people do. Like, <laughs> you can do that with this if you want. And you don't have to pedal backwards when you go backwards. All right. So it's kind of got everything. While we're talking about the hubs, let's talk about the BSD Jersey Barrier hub guards. They've seemed to have done a really great job of making that transition from the hub to the peg really smooth. So how do these things kind of coincide with your BSD rude tube pegs? Yeah, they I've never had any problems with them. Like rails, ledges. Jersey knew what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, he's the, one of the grind legends. Yeah, that's why you never hit your chain, because <laughs> everything's just set up perfect. Let's talk a little bit more about the pegs, the Rude Tube. Dan Playley's signature. Um, you've got the Chromo Core. You're running plastic. Why do you run plastic? How important is the Chromo Core for you? Got the Chromo on the back and then the Ally on the front. Mm. Uh, just because you never really goes hard on the front, but on the back, you're always just slamming into stuff. So I feel like the Chromo is just better, but then, you know, keep it light on the front. Why do you choose plastic bags? <laughs> well, you can grind everything. <laughs> like, why why restrict yourself with a metal peg? Seems kind of silly. Sounds and... cooler, though. <laughs> oh, that is cool, yeah. You do. <laughs> you do look a lot cooler on Instagram, <laughs> which is what people want. <laughs> I'm just old, so I'm, I'm stuck in my metal peg ways. Well, it's time for a change, yeah, time for a change. We can grind some rough flat ledges with the plastic pegs. Couple nice flat ledges This there. one here, yeah, right yeah, there, yeah. yeah. Don't All right. need the wax. That looks marble. I think you could grind that with metal pegs. Nah, 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 no, 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 metal 
the ice is going to be way shorter with the metal. You'll chip it and then that'll be the spot done. Uh, no one else true. will be able to ride it. Yeah, the skaters will be pissed. Yeah. So something that might seem minor, but I noticed these pegs are offered in both a 14 millimeter axle and a 10 millimeter. A lot of pegs today are all in 14 and they have this little annoying adapter. And that thing drives me nuts when I'm trying to take my front wheel on and off. So BSD doesn't mind having the extra skew in their system so that they can offer that convenience. I remember for me, the advantage of that is like, if you're taking your bike apart and traveling with it a lot, it's not gonna get lost. It's such an easy bit to get lost. True, yeah. So, I mean, that's good. So thank you BSD for making pegs in both 14 millimeter and 10 millimeter. So you've got some sort of secret BSD prototype rims on this bike. What can you tell us about these rims and when can we expect to see them available at Source BMX? Uh, yeah, so the rims are carbon. Um, carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, been running the, these ones for maybe a year. And so far, it's been amazing, yeah. Joe Foley's been running them. He does some massive stuff on them. All right. Again, you've got your own signature tires, the BSD Donna Street. What went into this tread design and what size and tire pressure do you prefer? I normally run between 40 and 50. Sometimes a bit less, sometimes a bit more. It just depends on the season. These are 2.4. It's a fatter one. Bigger one. Yeah, yeah. Better for uh, keeping the tires on the rails. And yeah, they've got like put like a really nice smooth sidewall so you don't get snagged on any grinds, which I really like. Sounds like the perfect tire. You've done it. <laughs> You've done it. How about the parks? Can it handle the parks? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a man of the streets myself, so... So you consider this more of a street tire? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Finally, let's talk about the contact points. You got your hands with the Lisa grips, and you've got your feet with the uh, Reed Stark Signature Safari pedals. Break down these two parts for us and uh, what you like about them. Yeah, I like the Lisa grips. Nice and thin, so it feels like you've got a good grip mm -hmm. on the bars. For the pedals, once again, just nice and grippy so your feet don't slide off. Good for the crank arm grinds. All right, Alex, thanks for sharing your bike with Source BMX today. Make sure to go on the Source Bike Builder. There you can see everything Alex is riding. You can get the pricing, the spec, and the availability. SourceBMX.com. <laughs>